live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to HPE Discover 2016. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Alistair Winter is here, he's the Vice President of Technology Services Support for Compute for HPE. Alistair, good to see you again. Great to be here. So we were just kind of riffing off camera about the growth in services, two consecutive quarters of growth. It's, it's powered uh, you know, a lot of the cash flow on HPE's uh, income statement. And uh, a lot of the things that you've announced a couple of years ago are really starting to kick yes. in. Give us the update on the services business. Yes, well thank you. So we're really proud of the performance of the business. Two consecutive quarters of growth and uh, services being very much a, an annuity business takes a long time to turn around, so we've got the tanker turned around and uh, we've got some momentum now. So really what we've been focused on, of course, is ensuring that we're wrapping our great products with the appropriate professional services and support. So, you know, a very much a traditional support-focused business, we're doing extremely well there. Um, but also we, we sort of diversified a little, as you, as you referenced a few years ago, and we started to focus on developing new experiences that were, were maybe less associated with the product itself. Uh, so with our data center care uh, solution. And that's been extremely successful. So we've really focused on um, you know, developing this experience which is all about helping customers drive success through IT. So it's not just about supporting them, it's about how do they extract the value uh, from, uh, from that and uh, flexible capacity, which you'll hear a lot about during uh, the show, and it's very, very visible here, has been really the superstar performer for us. So that's really services leading products and allowing uh, our customers to consume IT in a very, uh, in a very different way. So it's a cloud-like experience, but on-premises. Um, and, and really, the, you know, you'll see the tagline here is why choose? You know, why, why, why does the customer have to choose between public cloud and on-premises? data center IT with, with flexible capacity, they can actually have it all. So that's been uh, growing hugely and uh, you know, we're very, very happy with the performance of that business. It's kind of you to point out, uh, not to point out, my, my mistake in the introduction today of saying HP was getting out of the services business, uh, obviously, clearly you're not, but there, you did do a spin in uh, a, a transaction earlier this year, got rid of the former EDS uh, business. Can you explain, I think there is some confusion yes. over what exactly the services strategy is. Why did you do that, uh, uh, that transaction and, and what was the strategic, what have you kept strategically? Sure, that's no, a, great, a great question. Thank you for the opportunity <laughs> to, to, to cover it. So with, uh, really, the way I'd simply describe it is that we're out of the outsourcing business now, um, whether that's IT outsourcing or business process outsourcing, which is really the bulk of what EDS or what ES uh, had, to, uh, had to offer. Um, clearly, uh, you know, given that there's now a, a, a focus on infrastructure, you know, HP is very much focused on, on the infrastructure, uh, there's an opportunity to wrap that with, uh, with, uh, with services, with advisory services, with professional services, and with, with support services. So the, the, the business that remains is very large. We have over 22,000 professionals. We have great partnerships with our channel partners and with our technology uh, partners. So it's a very vibrant, very active um, uh, business. And I think um, with, uh, with, uh, with ES moving out, it gives us the opportunity to partner far more with uh, the likes of Accenture and Wipro, who I know you've already uh, talked to there. They're good examples of now where we can uh, really step forward and, and engage with those in a much more active, uh, active way. And, and so what are the swim lanes there, Alistair? Obviously, you've got your product related stuff, you've got the, what you're calling non-product specific services like data center care, flexible capacity, but describe in more detail the swim lanes between what HPE services would do and what some of your partners would do. So I, I think, um, as, as I indicated, really our services are much more around the, 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 the infrastructure itself. itself. Um, whereas I think uh, you know, our, our big partners, you know, they bring a level of uh, industry vertical knowledge or, or um, um, some specific uh, insight and value that, that we can't and will not recreate inside of, of our uh, organization. So you'll see us, I mean, we'll bring um, some vertical expertise and, and, and products that uh, will be appropriate in certain markets, but um, 
you know, I think the, you know, the opportunity really for, for us is to be the, the infrastructure partner uh, for those, um, uh, for those uh, SIs and, uh, and, and companies. And, and there are certain um, services value propositions that we can bring to them that actually differentiate them in the market. And again, you know, flexible capacity is a great example of, of, uh, of where, you know, for example, an Accenture, which really doesn't want to get into the data center ownership business, can actually offer that type of solution to their customers using a, a flexible consumption model powered by uh, HPE flexible capacity. Digital transformation is a big theme at this conference. It'll be the theme of today's keynote. How does your organization relate to transforming your customers' business? So, absolutely, and uh, it really is uh, it's, it's key, a key strategic area for, uh, for us. I mean, what I would say is, uh, and what we observe, is actually as customers transform to uh, a digital business, actually the IT experience becomes almost synonymous with um, the, uh, the customer's own business um, or the experience of their customer or their partner or their employee. So whereas you know, previously, really we were here to help the IT department provide a service to their internal users, now actually what we're doing, especially as you get to the edge, the intelligent edge, actually what we're doing is really what the customer is experiencing. So um, you know, a huge opportunity from a services uh, point of view to, to add some, some value and content uh, there. Um, we're really focused on, uh, from an advisory perspective, on, on four key swim lanes. We're looking at hybrid IT, so the, 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 you know, really the ability to manage this on-premises IT and, and, and cloud IT and really being able to help customers place their workloads uh, correctly and being able to provide a support solution that covers both. So regardless of, of where they end up operating, they have one support provider that, can, uh, that, that they can turn to. Uh, as part of that, we're looking at uh, applications, um, not recoding applications, but helping customers modernize applications with technology like Docker, um, which you saw. So really pushing on infrastructure automation and, and helping customers um, uh, utilize things like microservices um, uh, effectively. So those two. Then we focused on IT Edge, really bringing uh, value to the edge, bringing compute to the edge and uh, you know, really offering services that, um, that help our customers there. And again, as part of that, we're looking at uh, you know, big data and really helping ensure that the insight that we're able to extract from devices at the edge uh, is processed and brings value at, uh, at the edge. So, so you'll see us you know, very much focus on those areas in terms of a, a, a advisory. Um, and uh, you know, those t you know, typically resonate very well with our, with our partners. Now, several years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the technology services support organization was folded in under the enterprise group. Um, and that was an attempt to sort of align things better, streamline the organization. You've always had, obviously, capabilities around product, but then you've extended beyond, as you pointed out, beyond, beyond product. Now with the EDS spin merge, the CSC, uh, and of course the software division as well, going to micro focus, particularly the latter, has that also sharpened your focus as a services organization? And, and how has it done so and affected other potential partnerships? Yes, I mean, it's, it certainly has uh, sharpened our, our focus. I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, re really what this is, uh, forcing us to do almost is, is explore new partnerships and, and, and really looking at how do we construct an ecosystem that delivers an experience to a customer that, where we can really overlay our uh, capabilities and our, and our you know, global strength. So you know, um, uh, uh, Docker is a good example and um, Mesosphere is a, is a good example of where we've worked very actively to bring, I guess, a traditional uh, support element to it, so we want to support their, uh, their products, but also you know, using um, solutions like flexible capacity, look at alternative ways for customers to, to consume. So you'll hear some news uh, on main stage today about what we're doing uh, in that regard, some exciting news that really shows how we can combine you know, the value that we bring with the value that you know, some of these innovative partners can bring. And you'll see us do more and more, um, more and more partnership work. 
I want to take you back to something, a term you used earlier, hybrid IT. We hear that term a lot these days. Uh, it's not the same as hybrid cloud. It's a different organization, a different delay, uh, way of delivering IT services. What, what is hybrid IT? So, so very simply for me, it's, it's um, a, a customer and IT department having um, a number of sourcing options, you know, whether that's on-premises delivered IT uh, in a traditional delivery model or a, a private cloud, or really taking service from someone else's data center is the way I would describe it, whether that's a public cloud or software as a service. So really what we're seeing are IT departments um, embracing the cloud as a sourcing option. I would say two years ago they really saw public cloud as a, as a threat and they were doing everything they could to, uh, to, to really avoid engaging. Um, and that actually forced a number of the business lines of business or developers to actually go to the cloud directly, bypassing IT. Uh, I think we now see IT really uh, viewing it as a, um, uh, as a strategic asset. Um, and, and really what we're saying is, look, we, we need to ensure that um, placement of workloads is, is simple and it's agile and it's supportable end to end. Um, so we're saying, look, we, you know, what we want to do is to create a support experience, a services experience that embraces that and, and ensures that you know, as customers you know, move workloads from on-premises to to cloud, or they decide to continue to run on-premises, that it's a, it's a simple experience, and they can consume it in a way that um, you know, brings value to them, uh, both operationally and financially. So, uh, but, you know, but that's a structural change. I mean, that, that's a cultural change. Is that within your domain? Yes, yes, it's, it, it, it absolutely is. Do, do customers typically come to you saying, we want to get to hybrid IT, we want you to help us, or, or is that something that you We'll, we'll, we'll nudge them toward as you, as you engage. So I would say two years ago we were nudging. I would say today every customer I talk to is already doing hybrid IT. Um, and it's more about you know, how do they refine that to a point where it's, it's um, fully operational and really adding the value that, or the potential value that it has to offer. So I'm hearing a story, Alistair, of sort of streamline organization, focus, um, it's going to be kind of strange asking a services person this, but I see HP as a technology and product company first. Is that fair? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so help me so square course, that circle. So look, look we're, we're, we're clearly very proud of our <laughs> engineering heritage, and, and we make great, great products. It's the roots. It's, yeah. the, it's the roots, it's the DNA of the company, and uh, yeah, we're very, very proud of it. So um, maybe I was a little bit disrespectful <laughs> to my colleagues. <laughs> but I think, you know, as, you know, as, as I've described, really, you know, what we're seeing is customers, I mean, it, it, you know, a few years ago, what customers used to decide is, look, this is the gear I want. Help, help, you know, help me decide how I want to buy it. Now customers are saying, I don't, I, actually, I don't want to buy gear anymore. Help, help me consume it, whether that's on premises or from the, uh, uh, from the cloud. So what, you know, what we're doing, what the services team are doing and the product team are doing is really driving to a common vision which is about simplicity and agility. You know, how, how can we remove some of that undifferentiated heavy lifting that we were doing um, you know, many years ago when you were operating a data center? I mean, this, many of these things really don't add true value or differentiation to a customer's business. They were important IT tasks, you know, like backing things up or updating firmware. You know, the, the, these are important things you have to do when you operate your own IT, but they don't really add differentiation uh, to, uh, to a, a customer. So what, you know, what we're doing on the services side is saying, look, a, a customer has an existing investment. How do we work with them to simplify the operation of that investment? How do we take away that undifferentiated heavy lifting? How do we automate it? Because there is lots you can do with an existing investment. And then obviously our product teams are developing technology which brings additional simplicity and agility. So you know, when a customer decides I, I want to continue to consume IT on premises, when they roll in our new gear, their experience just gets better and better. So you really need these two things, they're very symbiotic, and it's all about this experience. And you, you cannot deliver an experience just through a product alone, it's a combination of the product. Mm -hmm and the service. How has the decision process changed? In, in the days of outsourcing, it was very much a, an ROI decision. You know, buy my equipment and you're going to save me X, uh, X percent on my costs. How, what are the, how have those factors changed uh, in this new world you're talking about? 
So I would say, I mean, you still, I mean, there are still lots of customers that buy through a traditional sort of procurement uh, method like you described, but more and more our discussions are happening with the CFO or with the lines of business. Um, especially the CFO actually with, with a flexible consumption model like flex capacity. So, um, you know, re really we're talking, again, we're sort of leading with consumption as being the sort of the primary discussion point. Really trying to look at how do we maximize a customer's cash flow? How can we explain the true cost of public cloud versus uh, on-premises cloud? So, I, I, I would say that, you know, the people that we're working with, the personas still exist inside of the customer that, the same as they always have. It's just that we're, we've sort of elevated our discussion outside of procurement and, and, and classic IT to talk now with, uh, with uh, the, the financial organizations and also the lines of business to really understand you know, what's, the, what's the experience that they want to create for their, uh, for their customers. Uh, and through doing so, actually it makes what we have to offer much more valuable to, you know, to IT. As infrastructure becomes programmable, we talk about infrastructure as code, you talk about heavy, high degrees of, of automation, that's a whole new business model uh, for not only HPE, but for its customers, and it seems like the role of the services organization, the technology services and support organization, is to facilitate that new yes. business model for your customers. So last question is, where do you see this going over the next 12, 18, 24 months? Um, we're at Discover, let's say, two years from now. What, what's it going to look like? Wow, what a question. <laughs> so I, you know, I think you'll see um, us continue to be very much services-centric and services-led. Actually, if you walk around the floor today, if you go to the Transformation Zone 1, uh, Transform to Hybrid, this is a completely uh, services-led, services-managed uh, experience. So I think you'll continue to see us uh, you know, focus on that. Um, as you say, you know, automation, you know, this, this notion of simplicity and agility is really critical to the company, uh, critical to a digital transformation. So you'll see us continue to focus on that. And, and I really hope you, what you'll see over time is that it'll be very difficult to, to sort of spot the services guy from the product guy, because these things are going to become one. And that's, uh, that's certainly our hope. Excellent. All right, Alistair, thanks very much again for coming back in theCUBE. My pleasure. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from HPE Discover 2016 in London. Be right back.